Hey guys, John V here from Phone Reno. Right now you're watching our in-depth video comparison between the Google Nexus 5 and the Motorola Moto X. So we know that the Google Nexus 5 has a lot of interesting things going for it. First and foremost, you gotta talk about that price point. 349 is pretty impressive. At the same time, it also has some pretty neat hardware specs and the latest version of Android. However, the Moto X still comes along with its own unique set of cool features that make it stand out, particularly the design aspect of it, and of course, the handsets we see to the experience. We're gonna find out exactly how these two handsets stack up against one another. It's no question about it, folks. It's the Moto X that stands out more with its design. It just has a lot more appeal to it. Nexus 5 is a little bit too conventional, a little bit flatter, whereas with the uh, Moto X, it's really cool with the customizability with its design. So you could select the back color, the accents, and even some other things to it that really makes it stand out. And top of that, it's very curvy. They're both constructed out of plastic, giving them a very good lightweight feel in the hand. At the same time, they're both also featuring the same soft touch matte finishes. So what happens with that is that it does a great job in keeping the handsets very clean. So they're very resilient to fingerprints and smudges. Due to the curved nature of the rear casing on the Moto X, it just has the better in the hand feel. On top of that, it's not as large compared to the Nexus 5 just because it has smaller displays. So overall, we definitely like the more natural and comfortable feel with the Moto X. It's actually not that bad here with the Nexus 5 as well, and that's despite being the larger handset. Now, because of its flatter construction, it doesn't quite have the same ergonomic feel in the hand compared to its rival. Now the Nexus 5 features a larger 5 inch 1080p IPS LCD display which gives it a pixel density count of 445 pixels per inch. While the Moto X packs along a 4.7 inch 720p AMOLED panel so its pixel density count stands at 316 pixels per inch. Thanks to some engineering marvel, the two handsets are able to actually minimize their footprints thanks to the skinny bezels on the left and right sides of their displays. On paper, the Nexus 5 has the higher pixel density count, so technically it, has, it produces more detail, but honestly, from a normal viewing distance, it's almost indistinguishable. Both are equally sharp to the eye. It's only when we actually view the, view the two handsets very close to our eyes that we notice that the Nexus 5's display is a lot more sharper looking, so it's able to draw out more details. See that they employ different display technologies. They have their own great qualities about them. So with the Nexus 5's IPS LCD panel, you can get the more natural looking color tones, whereas with the Next, with the Moto X, it tends to be a little bit more saturated. The Nexus 5's display proves to be better when it comes to outdoor visibility, but there are better viewing angles with the Moto X, just because with the Nexus 5, we do notice just a little bit of a milky or washed out tone at some extreme angles. They share the same ports and buttons around their trim. So we have their three and a half millimeter headset jacks, noise cancellation microphones, micro USB port for charging data connectivity, standard mics. The speaker on the Nexus 5 is placed on the bottom edge, whereas it's in the rear with the Moto X. If you love taking photos, you'll really appreciate what these two handsets have to offer. They really stress the fact that they're great with low lighting performance. With the Nexus 5, it's an 8, meg, an 8 megapixel autofocus camera versus the larger 10 megapixel clear pixel camera in the Moto X. As far as their front facing cameras are concerned, a 1.3 megapixel one in the Nexus 5 versus a 2 megapixel one in the Moto X. With their closed designs and all, that means there's no storage expandability, but luckily both are available in either 16 or 32 gigabyte capacities. As we know, the Nexus 5 is running the latest version of the platform, which is Android 4.4 KitKat, and comes along with some enhancements over the uh, older, slightly older, older Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean experience with the Moto X. Now, the nice thing about both experiences is that they adhere to the core foundational aspects of Android. So you're gonna have that rich personalization with the home screen, the notifications panel will work in the same manner, and on top of that, just the overall look and feel is very similar between the two, just because they're mostly stock, but there are some enhancements and even functionality that we like about the two devices. Let's first talk about the visual presentation. Now with Android 4.4 KitKat on the Nexus 5, it has a slightly cleaner look to the user interface compared to the older version of Android running on the Moto X. But despite that, they have some clear similarities and they resemble each other for the most part, except with the exception of just some different color schemes that we see throughout some of the applications. 
Like we said, there are some similarities with their functions. For example, notifications panel, same identical one on both devices. Not one has more features than the other. We can also gain access to some connectivity features and even adjust the brightness from here. And as far as multitasking is concerned, they handle it in the same manner. With KitKat though, it actually integrates the Google Now experience to the home screen. So all you gotta do is swipe to the leftmost panel and you get right into it. But then again, it's still really accessible with the Moto X. All you gotta do is the traditional way. We prefer the way the Moto X handles accessing Google Now with its touchless controls just because it's actively listening. So even if the device is turned on, you can launch the service. Whereas with the Nexus 5, you gotta actually have it turned on and be on the home screen. So for example, Okay, Google now. When are the devils playing next? The devils are playing the Maple Leafs tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. The devils are playing the Maple Leafs tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. When both handsets are turned off, we actually prefer the way the Moto X handles notifications just because of its active displays feature. Essentially, you could take it out of your pocket or just flip it over. It automatically will, will just show you the time and even some pertinent notifications without actually turning on the device. With the Nexus 5, it has an LED notification light below the display that pulsates, but in order to view those actual notifications, you gotta unlock the device. Still, the Nexus 5 boasts a wealth of functionality that we don't see over on the Moto X and its older build of Android. So with KitKat on the, on the Nexus 5, for example, when it comes to the personalization aspect, we could actually have now the ability to actually preview a wallpaper before selecting it. So you could actually just choose and see what they look like before going through with that. It's minor, but it's still something we appreciate. When it comes to uh, paying, you have the ability to use the tap and pay feature, which works in conjunction with things like the Google Google Wallet application so you could use the device to make purchases at an actual retail location. You also have the ability to actually wirelessly print uh, you know, documents or photos from the that are stored on the device. And finally, when you run the camera application, it features this HDR Plus mode as well, something we don't have available on the, on the Moto X. At the end of the day, the Nexus 5 really stands out for its Android 4.4 KitKat experience. It's the latest and greatest, and at the same time, it has some new features that we like, but you still can't count out the Moto X just because Motorola has some enhancements that really fine tune the experience. For example, you have active displays and even touchless controls, which really make it make the device very useful in many ways. At the same time, you kind of know that the KitKat experience is eventually gonna go to the Moto X as well, but right now, you can't deny the fact that there's just a rich amount of functionality, the updated visuals that really catch us with KitKat on the Nexus 5. So we know that the Nexus 5 is packing the more impressive hardware under the hood. It's powered by the quad-core 2.3 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 processor, which is coupled with two gigabytes of RAM and the newer Adreno 330 GPU. Whereas with the Moto X, it relies on the Motorola X8 mobile computing system, which consists of a modified dual-core 1.7 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro processor coupled with two gigabytes of RAM and the Adreno 320 GPU. Obviously, the Nexus 5 has the more intimidating hardware over the Moto X, but when it comes to just some basic performances or basic tasks, they both exhibit the same level of snappiness that we love, so it's really hard to say which one is superior. It's only we're doing more intensive stuff like playing games, 3D games that require a lot of process power. We do notice that the Nexus 5 does deliver the better performance between the two handsets. But when it comes to just basic stuff, surfing the web, opening up applications, it's hardly noticeable which one's better. Mainly to its larger display, the Nexus 5 has the slightly more spacious on-screen keyboard, but that's pretty much it. They're both identical with their functions, super responsive, and the Moto X, despite having a slightly smaller display, it's still very easy on the fingers. Likewise, they're both fantastic when it comes to surfing, surfing the web. They both feature fast 4G LTE connectivity, so pages load up in a very quick manner. At the same time, when it comes to their performances like kinetic scrolling or page rendering, they're pretty much identical. See that we have the Google Play Music application on both handsets. Nothing different whatsoever when it comes to their presentations and even their functions, identical to one another. As far as the audio quality of the respective speakers, just because it's placed on the bottom edge with the Nexus 5, it's better dispersed versus the one in the Moto X, it's in the rear. The volume outputs are great, but with the uh, Nexus 5, it tends to crackle a lot more over the Moto X. 
out of the box you have more video codec support with the Moto X but when it comes to playing high definition videos the two are more than awesome for the experience just because they have very smooth playbacks and of course very sharp looking as well now it's just a matter of personal preference you gain a larger display on the Nexus 5 but you do have those rich and very saturated colors with the AMOLED panel in the Moto X which really helps to catch our attention as well so here are the camera UIs on both handsets. The nice thing about it, they keep it very simple and easy, but at the same time, they don't have as many shooting modes or manual controls versus some other handsets out there. With the Moto X, you swipe to the right, you have this dial here. You could set HDR mode, you could adjust the flash, you could select touch focus, you have even this cool slow motion mode if you want, and you have also that panoramic mode as well. Meanwhile, with the Nexus 5, you have a few more shooting modes. So you have the usual panoramic as well, but it also has photosphere mode for those 360 degree shots. And when it comes to some manual controls, you have a few here. You can adjust things like the, uh, the exposure if you want. You have the HDR plus mode, which is an exclusive feature here on the uh, Nexus 5. And on top of that, you could also have different sceneries and even the white balance is something that you can adjust. So you're probably wondering which of these two handsets have the better camera, either the 10 megapixel clear pixel camera of the Moto X or the 8 megapixel autofocus camera of the Nexus 5. Overall, we're gonna give it to the Nexus 5. Now, in terms of outdoor shots, it's really hard to say which one has the superior visuals. They both are able to capture some really sharp looking details. The colors seem to be a little bit more saturated on the, uh, on the Nexus 5, but still very pleasing with the two. However, the Nexus 5 shows its superior superiority under lower lighting conditions. First and foremost, a lot more sharper looking details in its shots versus the Moto X. We can see here, right here, you can still make out the sign with the uh, Nexus 5. The other thing with the Moto X is that it tends to have a lot more overexposure with its looks. At the same time, there's just a heavier presence of noise throughout the shot. We also like the 1080p video recording quality on the Nexus 5 just because again you have some more pleasing visuals, very sharp, punchy colors, uh, it has a little bit more of a jittery focus so it's very sensitive whereas with the Moto X rather slow with its focusing and we tend to see a little bit more artifacting elements with the Moto X's results. There's not one handset we prefer when it comes to phone calls. They're pretty much average. With the Nexus 5, its earpiece is just a little bit weak. And top of that, voices tend to have a flat tone to them. Uh, with the Moto X, we do notice just some robotic tones with voices through its earpiece, but it is stronger in its volume output. Luckily, on the other end line, the callers didn't have any issues. But with the speakerphone, there's more crackling evident with the Nexus 5. We wouldn't say that battery life's one of the strong points with both these handsets. We're at least able to get by through a solid eight hour work shift with heavy usage, but the Nexus 5 taps out usually at the 12 hour mark, while the Moto X gives us a little bit more at 14 hours. So it seems as though the Moto X might be a little bit overpriced when you kind of think about it. Just because at $200 to your contract, you're not really getting a device that has the latest and greatest in terms of the hardware experience. But nevertheless, the performance is nice and of course the enhancements that we find with its customized experience is still something that we appreciate. Well, we gotta talk about outright pricing as well. And we know the Nexus 5 bears a $349 price point, which is amazing when you think about what kind of specs it has under the hood, the type of performance we get of it, and also the latest Android experience out there. So why would you want to pick up the Moto X over the Nexus 5? Well, if you need to be on the contract, or if you're gonna go with the contract anyway, you're better off just spending $200. It's still cheaper than $350 price point you're gonna to have to dish out for Nexus 5. And the Moto X is still a fantastic handset, especially for its customized design. It really stands out if you're using it in public just because of those cool color options. And same time, the experience is something that we tolerate as well. On the flip side, if you don't care about signing a tier contract, you just want to buy a device outright, then we're going to have to recommend the Nexus 5 for that just because it offers a lot more value over the $530 costs associated with the Moto X. And knowing that it is a Nexus device, you know you're going to get the latest and greatest updates faster than other phones. So if you guys want to learn more about either the Nexus 5 or the Moto X, you can check out our website, phonearena.com. John V, thanks for watching.